Hey, here we are talking about the first afternoon of the dialogue on good, evil, and the existence of God. The first afternoon begins with the restatement of the idea that a whole thing can be good even if parts of it individually are bad or, or maybe indifferent. Um, and what we get now is a sort of clearer statement of what the goals are of the dialogue. So remember that Gretchen is not a believer and she thinks that the problem of evil shows that um, the God that is traditionally understood can't really exist because the God as traditionally understood has to be all good, all powerful, and all knowing. And since there's suffering, it means that he can't be all three. So what the believer uh, Miller is going to try to do is to show how these three things, even though they might appear to be inconsistent with the existence of suffering, can actually be consistent. And this is a project that in history has been called theodicy. Theodicy is just a name for um, what a philosophical response to the problem of evil is. It's a way of making God's three attributes uh, consistent with the existence of suffering. Um, now, one thing that has to happen here is um, a kind of account that's specific in a certain way. So it's not enough for the believer, Miller, just to sort of wave his hands and say, oh, God is mysterious. And, um, you know, there is some possible reason why there is suffering, but we can't understand it. Because that's not really an explanation for the consistency of God's three attributes with the existence of suffering. It's basically a way of throwing up your hands and saying, well, I don't know, but I don't have to know. So what, what uh, Sam is going to try to provide Gretchen here is a sort of reasonably possible big picture that would show how God can be all-knowing, all-powerful, and all-good and still permit or create suffering. Um, the, the theodicy then, this big picture story, it, it's going to have three parts. And the first part is the idea that... Um, Freedom is better than non-freedom, or that a world with freedom is better than a world without any freedom. And this is a pretty uh, widespread common idea, I think, that uh, free will is a good thing and that human beings at least have free will. And what free will allows us to do is to choose between options, and some of those options are good, some of them are evil, and if we choose evil, then it's not that God has chosen the evil, it's that we chose the evil, and so God is not responsible for that evil. Um, now, there's an objection to this idea right away. So if part one of the theodicy is that freedom is better than non-freedom, the objection comes that, well, how can we really be free if God knows everything? In particular, if he knows what we're going to do in the future, then we can't really be free. Um, and this objection is met pretty quickly with the idea that it's possible to know what's going to happen in the future, what someone will do in the future, and that person could still be free. So um, if my friend knows me very well and knows that I'm always going to choose um, the burger over the hot dog, then um, that person, my friend, knows that I'll choose the burger, but it doesn't mean that I'm not free to choose the burger versus the hot dog. So. Um, all of the participants in the dialogue, at least at this point, seem to agree that God could know what happens in the future, knows what each of us will choose, but that does not make us in any sense unfree. Um, we don't become robots because of that. We're still free to choose what we want. And uh, that's where the first afternoon ends.